Welcome to the Encore. This week we're speaking of Wes's, Pastor Wes's sermon series, In the Beginning, This is Creation. Now, if you missed last week's episode or if you missed last week's sermon, you can click on the show notes below and you can find that link to either sermon or the other Encore. Also, we get a lot of questions throughout the week. Um, people are asking us a lot of questions. We're not always able to answer everything. If you have questions during the show, you can put those in the show notes below. And also we'd ask that you'd subscribe to our uh, channel, our YouTube channel for The Rock, and you can get easy access to all of these as we continue to do that. So welcome back, Pastor Wes. Good to be back, Scott, <laughs> in my white socks, which I wore for those that commented <laughs> on my white socks. They're, they may be here every week. Finishing it with the 1989 Air Jordans, too. That's, that's special. You guys are loved. Just know that. All right, a couple of questions we have for uh, this week. In the beginning, creation. Now, creation, there's a, there's a lot to deal with. Um, and so again, we welcome all those questions below. <clears throat> in, in the beginning, we see all of this, and we'll, we'll flip over to Genesis 1, but one of the questions that I've had people ask me was the fact that the sun and the moon were created on day four. Mm -hmm. However, there speaks of light prior to that. So, Let's hear your thoughts on, so what's the deal? on that. <laughs> what right. is the light right. prior to the sun and moon? Right. So, um, yeah, that's a good question. I had a, When I was reading it, too, uh, studying this, I, I thought, I, even when I read it uh, on the weekend preaching, I thought, I wonder how many people just noticed that, and I just moved past it. Right. It's not the time to explain everything, I but I thought, I wonder if anyone just saw that. And I had people uh, asking me about it, too. Um, Okay, so something we say sometimes, uh, not to walk away from finding the right answers, but sometimes it's okay to admit there is an element of mystery sure. uh, to God and how he operates. Um, so there is a little bit of an element of mystery to this that God, in the beginning, uh, revealed a light source of some kind. He said in verse 3, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness, called it day and night, day one. Um, I don't totally know, but I don't have a problem that God revealed light as things were created and mm -hmm. then placed the sun, moon, and stars in a unique way to give light on the earth and set it as finished creation. But there is further detail in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at 1 John, way in the New Testament. 1 John 1, 5 says, This is the message we have heard from Him, God, and announced to you that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. Um, now, I just want to admit for all the intellectuals out there, I do realize that he's talking uh, much more primarily about spiritual light, mm -hmm. you know, revelation, illumination <clears throat> of truth rather than physical light. I, I, I get it. But uh, in Revelation 21, it talks about the new heaven and the new earth, which may produce some questions. Yeah. Uh, and again, if you have questions, put them in the comments on YouTube. We'll try to answer you. But when he talks about the new heaven and the new earth, the holy city coming down out of heaven from God, it says in Revelation 21, 23, and the city has no need of the sun or of the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God has illumined it, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Um, I'm just going to leave it there, because... My answers can get long. Okay. <laughs> is the word on the street from our last episode. But... What we see here, and it's also reaffirmed in chapter 22, that God, uh, there is coming a time of perfection in heaven, when right. God regenerates the heavens and the earth, that <clears throat> He, some glory from Him, is the light. And it literally says there is no need of the sun or moon or stars. Yeah. So it's not that we don't see this elsewhere in the Bible. So why can't that be the same as Genesis? I'm not saying that's exactly what happened because I truly don't know, but it could be. Okay. And... Uh Follow-up question. I don't know if this is going to be lengthy or not, but it says, um, for the glory of God gives its light. Mm -hmm. Verse 3 in Genesis 1, God said, let there be light. Why would he need to 
command that to happen if it's if it's his glory right so um <clears throat> there are those that will hear the answer that i just gave uh, like commentaries and different things that will that will disagree with what i said because they say that genesis 1 3 is mm -hmm. created light mm -hmm. god is eternal light uh, i totally agree that god is eternal light um the only thing i would say to that is it could be possible that god um permitted that into creation and you know, let there be light and God's eternal light uh, right. comes in some form of creation as he creates the world. I, again, could be possible. I, I don't know. Or I'm totally wrong that it isn't the glory of God in any way that he just speaks it and there was a light source as he creates those other things then puts the sun, moon, and stars and removes whatever that was for whatever reasons only God would know. Uh, I'm okay with the mystery of it. So, I, yes, some would say, no, man, it's created light. And yeah, I, sure, sure. And I know, like, there's always there's always those people that are a lot smarter than me out there that are trying to dig right. deep into some things. Sometimes right. I'm just like, man, it's, it's God, and I kind of accept it, and mm -hmm. maybe that's a cop-out sometimes, but I feel that way. Uh, no, I mean, you have can't. what you have in the scripture, and I think you got to stick to it. And, and again, you know, I don't want to use it as a pass to be ignorant, but Deuteronomy right. 29, 29, the secret right. things belong to the Lord. Right. And some of uh, the order of creation could belong to the secret things of God, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Romans 1, I'm going to read this. You had uh, mentioned this in your sermon. I think you addressed it as well, but I want to talk a little bit deeper about this because I think it's, it's, it's extremely important. Mm -hmm. um, Romans 1 verse 19 and 20 says, For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. So this is kind of a, a couple, twofold question, I guess. But, you know, people, you would mention that the person out there in the middle of wherever that doesn't yeah. have... The access that we have, he's right. he's aware of the creation of the world, and so maybe he's able to come to a knowledge of there is a creator, there's a higher power, there's something mm -hmm. bigger than me. But you and I would teach, we would preach certainly that knowing a God, the Creator, is not enough. That it has to come in a repentance and a faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Right. How does Jesus fit into knowing, seeing the creation of the world? through God the Creator. Say more. Say more. Where, <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Like right now? No, no, no. How does, for, for that person, can he then become a believer just by saying, I, I think there's a bigger, oh, bigger world the out guy, there. There's right a now, a guy somewhere a guy, in the world, can he say, there, yeah. I, whatever you are, I believe in you, is he saved? Is he saved? Is he saved? I would say the Bible says no. Um, now... Let's say that guy seeks that, <clears throat> prays mm -hmm. to that, mm -hmm. which is revealed at a creation level. Um, I think as he seeks God, so again, um, Acts 17, 27. I, I mentioned this but did not read it right. uh, when I preached last week's message. So it says this. Uh, let's look at Acts 17, 26. And it says... Um, and he, God, made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation. So he had determined when they would live and where they would live. Mm -hmm. Verse 27, that they would seek God if perhaps they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Mm -hmm. Um People that look for what this says and what Deuteronomy 4 also says, if people look for God, they will find the true God. Uh, Acts chapter 8 shows the Ethiopian man riding in the chariot. Uh, he's looking for more clarity on God. He's, something is pulling at his heart, and he's seeking that out. Well, God sends Philip as a missionary to declare to him accurately who God is in Jesus Christ, and he believes in Jesus, saved and he is baptized on the side of the road. Right. I think if a man or a woman or someone in a faraway place seeks after a generality <clears throat> of God, where, what are you? 
And they are seeking. I don't think God is far from each one of us. God will find a way Mm -hmm. to reveal himself accurately in Jesus to that person. Send a missionary, send an angel, bring about a knowledge to them some way of who God is. But uh, I want to say simply, Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man, no man comes to the Father except through me. Um, I could go on and on about this, about about how there's no salvation. No one else acts for in the name of Jesus. Confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. they got to know Jesus. Right, right. Now, so one of the things I think when you say that is um, the eunuch did have scripture that he was mm-hmm. reading so mm-hmm. that there was there was something there that that maybe pointed him to it's it's bigger than me and i know we can't always speculate but for the person that doesn't have a, a translated bible in his language uh is in the middle of nowhere you know do, do you think that we we have a we have much we have great resources here in the mm-hmm. u.s for sure like we have everything at our disposal, commentaries, videos, a right. de- de- bunch of different translations. Do you feel that maybe God could be more gracious in their understanding of what that means to that person who doesn't have a translated Bible than to us who have access to all of it, who definitely have heard the name of Jesus here in the U.S.? I think, yes, I think God is more <clears throat> great. If, if he is more gracious... He is more gracious in his generosity in mm-hmm. revealing mm-hmm. Christ to them. Yeah. I think he can reveal if they, you know, you know, this is hard because you don't want to speak for God. Right. You got to you got to walk right. carefully right now because then you're going to tell somebody this is how God works. And it might not be. So if I can't back it with the scripture, you know, you got to watch out. But and I don't want to get all mystical either because people are crazy and then they'll take that and run with it crazy. But um, God, throughout the scripture, has revealed himself to people in dreams Mm -hmm. accurately. Now, again, I want to be careful. So don't come tell me, you know, you had some dream and Pastor Wes, I got a prophecy for you and you're supposed to go stand on a mountain and listen for, you know, people go crazy. But that is in the Bible, that God, so if they have no other way and Mm -hmm. they are seeking God, I think in his grace, in his generosity, he could come to somebody if no other way in a dream and even reveal himself accurately that they might fully and more fully understand the gospel. Yeah. Um, and I don't say that out of a vacuum. Uh, he has done this. He did it in the Old Testament. He, you know, he revealed parts of his will and what he was doing in dreams to Joseph. He revealed it to a pagan king, Nebuchadnezzar who did not know the Lord and and God began to speak things and he was all disturbed and right. that what do these mean all the sorcerers and stuff came around they didn't have a clue and you get me somebody Daniel comes in and shows him who God is and it mm-hmm. was the dream that pro- the disturbance of the dream and finding out what that mean that prompted him to see who God is and then he confesses the true Lord and Daniel what <clears throat> Three, six, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, right? Yeah. Daniel 3. And then he says later, uh, let it be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, right. and Abednego, and uh, no one else. There is right. no other, and all this stuff. So I think that can still happen. Right. Um, I'm not guaranteed. I'm not saying, please, nobody needs to say, well, 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 you know what happens is if they don't know God, he comes to them in a dream. But he could. Yeah. He could send an angel that they, you know, many times in the Bible you see an angel come and reveal accurately God. They don't even know it's an angel. Mm-hmm. They interact. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, what's it say? Many of us have entertained angels unaware. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is that... Yeah, no, that's. I think that's good. I think that answers a lot. I um, think so. An answer. Could he be more gracious? Yes, but only right. in he right. still re, he would still reveal Jesus. You got to right. have Christ. Yeah, and most people listening aren't in that setting, obviously, or maybe, maybe you don't even know anybody in that setting. So let's let's bring it back to um, our audience and our culture. You know, I think a lot of times, like we see, man, how could some of these people have not believed when they were walking with Jesus, right, in, in Jesus' times? And then I think like. Think of everything that we have access to, what we've heard. And I think when you say that, when you're preaching, like, I think it's so true that, you know, Ecclesiastes, uh, eternity is on the heart of man. Like, right. I feel like, you know, all of us, if we're honest, we're going, at some point I've contemplated, like, what is this all about? And I think, like, us in the U.S., like, 
understand like the, the, the awesome resources that we have, the access that we have, it makes us feel like, man, there's there's legitimately no excuse. This isn't a question. This is just a comment. So it's it's a good comment. There yeah. is no excuse. And like I said, I believe based on the teachings of Jesus, as I talked about in the sermon, um, people that reject the revelation, the the high level of revelation about God that we have, yeah, uh, will be judged honestly more harshly for rejecting so much. For, yeah, yeah, that's sobering to think about. Yeah, very much so. All right, now, so now we're going to dive in. We talked about some specific biblical questions. Now we're going to dive into a little bit of your head during the preparation time. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So, you know, you, you preach a 35, 40 minute message, whatever. I know there's a lot of time. That's, that's, that's kind of. Is that say. generous? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 35, <laughs> yeah. 40. Yeah, 47 six. minutes later, I try, right? Uh, oh, boy. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of prep time in that, there right? Is. So you, throughout the weeks, and you're, you're reading, you're studying. You can't say everything in that 47 minutes, whatever it may be. So nope. what's something that um, you would have liked to have maybe added to this sermon this week? Something you were like, man, this would have been a good thing to include. Uh, sometimes mm-hmm. you don't want to go too deep and go off the rails, but yeah. for follow-up purposes, what's, right. what's something else that you would have so liked to? So I guess to? we go off the rails in here. We're going to go off the rails in here. I'm gonna, and I'm going to sip my coffee and listen to you like that's, you're preaching to me. <laughs> that's what this venue is for, for me to go off the rails. Uh, two things. What did I not... What's, so let me just sim- simply state the question again yeah. for any listeners. What, what do I wish I could have included in the sermon that was not preached? Yes? Correct. Okay. That's what we're starting. I have two things. Uh, one is I would have liked, as I was studying, it was very interesting to me, uh, just in my own studies of the text, I would have liked to shown and demonstrated more from the Scripture as I'm talking about creation, how the Bible shows that <clears throat> Jesus is the creator that yeah. again going back to the first message in yeah, the series about right. how god is revealed in the scripture as father son holy spirit so then the new testament says that jesus it interchanges god with jesus and being the creator right. you know showing jesus as god i would have liked to have done a lot of that uh the new testament does that all over the place mm-hmm. of course john 1 one through three talks about it mm-hmm. in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god all things came into being by him, for him, through him, right? Then you see interesting things in the miracles of Jesus. Okay, the Bible says in Genesis that the earth was formless and void, that God created out of nothing. Mm-hmm. So then you would ask, well, if Jesus is the creator, do you ever see him in his miracles demonstrating being the creator? Well, sure you do. He created, so if you think about it like that, when he, create, when he feeds the 5,000 plus women and children, the Bible says, mm-hmm. uh, from the, the, what, the five loaves and two fish, he creates out of nothing. Uh, right. He, he, right. he grabs, and it says he begins dividing it up. He feeds everybody, and then they pick up 12 full baskets when it's over of leftovers. Right. Well, people, you know, there's a lot of ways to apply that scripture. It's been preached in many ways by me included, but... What I'd like to have done is mentioned that, dude, there it is right there. He created something from nothing. Nobody can do that except for God. You know, laws of physics and all that. I don't want to get all scientific. Yeah, but sure. Laws of physics is that you can't, nothing, matter does not come from nothing, except, of course, in the creation account. Well, mm-hmm. Jesus, did, what's he saying by doing that, creating, you know, feeding 5,000, five loaves of two fish? He's saying, I'm creator God. I can bring stuff from nothing. Yeah. He has control over creation. He commands the weather to be calm because he, the creation obeys his voice. Right. Um, you know, he creates, um, you know, he makes the mud, puts it on the guy's eyes and gives him sight. He, he uh, you know, turns water to wine. He commands one thing to become another thing. Well, mm-hmm. nobody can do that except the creator that can right. change form. You know, right. I would have liked to have done that. Colossians 1, I'll read that. And so that's one thing I wish I could have mentioned, shown that Jesus is in fact demonstrated as creator talking about jesus colossians 1 16 for by him all things were created both in the heavens and on earth visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities all things have been created through him and for him verse 17 he is before all things and in him 
all things hold together. It's mm -hmm. literally saying he holds things together at an atomic level, if you yeah. want to get all philosophical. <laughs> um, by his will, <clears throat> Jesus. I would have liked to have done that. Okay. So that's yeah, that. no, that's, that's a good thought. So uh, the final question we're going to talk about is... I have a is, second thing, but I don't know, dude. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go crazy, but... Email Pastor West. Ask him what his second thing is or put it on the I'll hang note. it out there. Yeah, there was a second there. thing, but it's kind of a long one. It could eat up a whole episode. So I'm just going to cliff hang it out there. If they want right. to know, email us. Bug them. Yeah. Email us in. If you want to know, I had a second thing I would have liked to preach, but it's a sermon by itself that I don't know if I'll ever get to. But I'm not going to tell you right now. So there you go. <laughs> All what right, else, let's, yeah. let's talk a little bit of uh, vulnerability. So when, okay. when I, when me personally, when I have an opportunity to teach, preach, or whatever um, in, in the studies and all of it, like I, I usually feel that whatever message I'm teaching or bringing, like I have learned so much more than any, anything I'm trying to convey to, the, Most to people. And a lot of times there's, um, you know, things that you've learned, but there's also like conviction where you're like, mm -hmm. man, I never, I never saw it this way. So yep. let's talk specifically about this message. Uh, maybe you can go back to the first one as well, the first two weeks and say for you, like what has been brought to the forefront of your mind or what's the, the thing that you're going, man, this, this, this is incredible or I'm convicted in this, however, okay. you, however you'd word that. So on a, on, you just said the word convicted. Yeah. Um, I, as I'm realizing and preaching the Bible says, um, where did I read it? Psalm 33. Um, I didn't, I didn't read this in every sermon because I was just had so much content that I didn't want to go over, uh, you know, a necessary time limit. But in Psalm 33, which I did read on the Saturday night service, um, it says when it talks about God creating everything in verse eight, "Let all the earth fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him." Mm -hmm. I real I was convicted myself as to how much I behold creation and don't take a moment to stand in awe of God. I mm -hmm. just, oh, it's a nice day. What am I going to do today? Like, what am I? And, and and I just it has caused me during this immediate season around this message to just sit and go, man, I have forgotten that creation is declaring the handiwork of God, and that when I behold creation. I should take. I should stand in awe of Him in the fear of the Lord that mm -hmm. has that knows my name, died to save me, <clears throat> and spoke the stars into existence. That's mind blowing. I just was kind of like, man, I've I, my life gets too fast, and I've let it slide. And right. I just have kind of just stood back after having studied this and just looked at these nice sunny days we're having and these beautiful nights. Just yeah. going, man, like God is awesome. What I learned. Um, you're all, you know, I, I learned, you know, how many times the scripture declares God as creator mm -hmm. and what that means and gives purpose to creation. Mm -hmm. I, I was just amazed by it myself. I'm like, wow, this talks about creation making a statement to man constantly, yeah. Old Testament and new, from Genesis to Romans 1 through the Psalms. I'm like, wow, this is really clear. But I never, I, I, I want to say this. I never saw in my life, um, it went on like a light bulb studying at my desk when I decided I wanted to mention evolution by name, mm -hmm. not to pick a fight with people who believe in evolution. Yeah. I'm not here to do that. What, you know, I'd love to sit down and reason with them. If you're out there, you believe in evolution, and but you have questions or you wonder why I believe what I believe. Man, we, Scott and I, anybody here, we, we'd love to just sit and talk with you. It's not a fight, not a debate. I'll buy your meal if you want to sit down and be like, dude, I still believe in evolution. I think you're crazy, but I'd love to sit with you. I'd love to talk with you. Um, but I wanted to talk about evolution. And the yeah. reason was is because Christians get all confused about this. And I hear people say that say they believe in Christ, they believe in the Word of God, it's the authoritative Word of God, and they, they are like, but I think evolution can hold hands with what the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to say no. But I wanted to say why. why? I didn't just why? want to be a bomb yeah, drop. Right, no, it right. can't, I don't want to be jerky, you know. So <clears throat> yeah. I, I was. I wanted to give peace reasons why. So I'm praying to the Lord in my studies last week, and I'm like, well, why not? And I always have been taught for a long time that well, one reason is because Genesis says God created things 
after its kind. Yeah. And evolution says one kind can become another. Well, the Bible rejects that. But the one I never saw where I was looking at is, and it was good. God says he saw creation and it was good. And then in Romans 5, it says, there, you know, death came by sin. There was mm -hmm. no death in the world. Evolution teaches that um, you got to die of, you know, a billion deaths or something right, right. for a fish to become a, a land creature or whatever. And I thought, well, that's impossible, mm -hmm. according to the creation account, because there was no death, yet there was all of creation. Mm -hmm. I never saw that before. I, I was reading Romans 5, and, and it says, And death came by sin, uh, but before that there was no death, and there was no corruption. The Bible says that bodies did not undergo decay. Right. And I'm like, oh, my word. Yeah. I can come at evolution on two. I, I was just sitting in my office going, well, look at that. And, and I wrote it down and I preached those being mm -hmm. two of the, there are other reasons, but those are the two reasons. Yeah. Uh, so I learned that myself. <clears throat> I was pumped. That's and, cool. Yeah. My good friend Phil and I were talking this Sunday morning about just that very thing. And both of us, like you, you read Genesis countless times and you never, you never think some of those things, but like the same thing, like we never realized like, in that creation, there was no death at all. You just kind of assume the trees are right. going to die, you know, things are going to happen, and it doesn't happen until man sins. So I think that leads us into a preview for next week. Is that where we're going? I got a preview for you, dude. In the next verse, verse 26, God says, Let us go down and make man in our image. He says us, he says our, it is capitalized mm -hmm. as someone's name. Mm -hmm. It is again, God is revealed in the scripture as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And here comes man. And so I'm going to preach man uh, being created on day six as a standalone sermon by itself. Um, there's a lot to say because man is uniquely created yeah. among creation. He's no different. Doubt. Man is different. No doubt. It is not just among fruit trees and whales. And then there's man. Man is different. And, and it's the only one God said, let us create him in our image. Right. And what does that mean? Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, well, that's, that's it. So for the Encore next week, you can look forward to that. If you missed any of the sermons or the Encores from the past week, you can get those on our show notes. We welcome all the comments below. Please do that. And then we look forward to seeing you guys next week and uh, this coming weekend.